Oh, hi, babes. Okay, I know it's not Halloween yet, but I was feeling really Halloween-y, so here I am. I'm a condom angel because, you know, condoms save lives. I also thought it'd be very fitting because all those sex questions y'all sent me ages ago are now being answered on the field. It's a new show with Astronauts Wanted and I'm on it and a bunch of other awesome YouTube ladies are on it, so you should all check it out. I'll put a link in the description. Now, I'm not sure if I've ever told you that I'm a really big fan of horror. <laughs> Like, it's kind of a problem. I just think it's such an interesting genre. It provides this unique look into what people's anxieties and fears are all throughout film history. So today I'm gonna talk about three of my faves, the 80s, 70s, and 60s, and they all have kind of feministy themes. The Shining is obviously about like a haunted hotel, bloody twins, and creepy old slash young lady. But the plot also centers on an abusive relationship. Part of what's so creepy about The Shining is our anxiety about the unpredictable and increasingly explosive behavior of Jack toward Wendy. Immediately, you feel his white hot hatred. He then goes on to call her a sperm bank, a bitch, he blames her for his violence, and tells the hotel ghost that she needs to be corrected. To me, the hotel itself is a metaphor for the trapped, isolated feelings of being in an abusive relationship. The hotel and Jack's abuse are Wendy's own personal prison. Stephen King has actually criticized Stanley Kubrick for Wendy's on-screen character. He said she's one of the most misogynistic characters ever put on film. She's basically just there to scream and be stupid, and that's not the woman that I wrote about. A lot of film critics also agree that Wendy's really unpalatable, and I even read a few people who said they were rooting for Jack to kill her. What? Yeah, she screams a lot, but screaming doesn't make you stupid, it just makes you scared. Here's Johnny. <laughs> but let's be real, you'd be scared too. I think she's kind, she's resourceful, do-it-yourself kind of lady. You know, she's fixing the radios, and she's fixing the heater, and she's doing whatever she can to keep her and her son alive. In the end, she succeeds. Victory! It's her abuser that's left out in the cold to die. Corrected, you might say. Carrie is another favorite of mine. Again, we have an abusive relationship, this time between a girl and her religiously fanatical mother. Her mom abuses her for becoming interested in boys and getting her period. <gasps> in the famous locker scene, Carrie's schoolmates also humiliate her for starting her period. But then, Carrie rises up and she exacts her revenge using her newfound powers of womanhood. Stephen King said, Carrie is largely about how women find their own channels of power, but also what men fear about women's sexuality. The book is, in its more adult implications, an uneasy masculine shrinking from a future of female equality. So King suggests that our fear in his story is not about the pig's blood or telekinetic even though those are creepy, but about our fears and anxieties of strong, powerful women. I think that Carrie is also a tale of women fearing each other's strengths. Notice that it's all women who are Carrie's main nemeses. Every single one of them tries to change who she is, except for one woman. And probably not coincidentally, she's the only one who survives at the end. Lastly is Rosemary's Baby in 1968. Rosemary's Baby is arguably Roman Polanski's greatest masterpiece, which is painfully ironic because he pled guilty to drugging and raping a 13 year old and then fled for asylum in France. In the story, unbeknownst to Rosemary, her husband and their neighbors arrange for her to be raped and to carry Satan's child. And while her world starts going awry after all this happens, she's made to believe that she's the one going crazy. Rosemary's baby remains a relevant metaphor for the slow erosion of reproductive rights that are happening in the US right now. But instead of those reproductive rights being taken by a witch's coven masking itself as harmless elderly neighbors, it's being taken by lawmakers. No! It can't be! As Rosemary's body becomes a vessel for everyone else's use, you're reminded of how your own choices are slowly being taken away as well. So in these stories, all the protagonists are white ladies, and this also sort of illustrates some of the representation problems that have plagued film history. Women's stories are still not told nearly as much, and that is compounded for women who are not white. Something to keep in mind. All right, babes, if you have any horror movies that you like that I should see, leave them in the comments. And before I go, I'm gonna leave you with a quote that I really like by John Carpenter. He said, monsters in the movies are us, always us, one way or the other, they're us with hats on. Thanks for watching, babes. I'll see you next time. Mwah. Except your mom. Oh. What?